Utilizing groundbreaking imaging technology, an international team of scientists and archaeologists have found a secret hallway within the heart of the ancient structure, beckoning them to explore its depths and reveal its purpose. The new discovery inside the Pyramid of Secret Rooms changes the way we look at the history of pyramids, because what scientists found in a secret room shocked the world. A group of specialists, led by Dr. Mustafa Wizari, uncovered a collection of 3,000-year-old coffins, each more stunning and mysterious than the previous one. These remarkable sarcophagi, which was discovered using super-advanced robots and various technologies, concealed for thousands of years the sacred grounds of the al Asaf Cemetery, have revealed long-lost secrets of ancient Egyptian burial practices and beliefs. The existence of the concealed passageway, which appeared unusual and cloaked in enigma, sparked discussions about the pyramid's initial intent. Dr. Wizari shared the age-old method for maintaining the coffin's natural luster, a mix of egg yolk and candle wax. This unusual process made sure the bright colors stayed, even as the spirits they once protected journeyed into the afterlife. The coffins displayed scenes from the Book of the Dead and vivid images of gods like Anubis and Osiris, providing a fascinating glimpse into ancient Egyptian beliefs and rituals. The discovery of two child-sized coffins was especially startling and rare, capturing the attention of people worldwide. Dr. Howis explained that ancient Egyptian burial customs showed great respect for the deceased, regardless of their age or gender. The thrilling uncovering of these coffins has led to a fresh understanding of ancient Egypt. In the wake of this impressive discovery, the world marveled as the mysteries of the tomb of Amenhotep III and Tutankhamun's tomb were brought to light. The excavation of these tombs and the puzzling artifacts within them stands as a testament to the commitment and determination of the archaeologists, who bravely explored the hidden depths of history, revealing long-buried ancient secrets. The Grand Gallery that was discovered has been analyzed by experts of the field, and the purpose of the Grand Gallery is finally clear. So, archaeologists have made an extraordinary discovery in Luxor, Egypt. They have uncovered a secret corridor. The video from a small camera showed 30 ancient coffins buried more than 2,500 years ago. The coffins, which were made of wood and decorated with intricate carvings and hieroglyphics, are remarkably well preserved. They date back to the late period of ancient Egypt, which spanned from 664 to 332 BCE. This was a period of significant changes and developments in various parts of the world. This was a time when ancient Greece was beginning to take shape. The period saw the rise of the city-states, including Athens and Sparta, which would eventually become major centers of civilizations and culture. In addition, the Roman Kingdom had been founded in 753 BC, and by 700 BC, the Roman Republic had begun to take shape. It would take several centuries for the Roman Empire to reach its full power and influence, but the seeds were sown during this time. The Assyrian Empire was a dominant force in the Middle East during this time. The Assyrians were known for their military might and their cruelty towards conquered people. In Asia, the Eastern Zhou Dynasty was in power in China during this time. This period saw the development of Confucianism and Taoism, two of the most important philosophical and religious traditions in Chinese history. Also in North America, the Almec civilization was flourishing in what is now modern-day Mexico. The Almec are known for their monumental stone heads and their influence on later Mesoamerican civilizations, such as the Maya and the Aztecs. But more importantly, this was a time of great political and social change in Egypt, and the coffins offer a fascinating insight into the religious and cultural beliefs of the period. A group of archaeologists who work for the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities found the coffins. Dr. Mustafa Wazeri and Dr. Zahar Hawais led the team. They are both experts in ancient Egypt and have worked on many important projects before. According to Waziri, this is the biggest discovery in Egypt in more than 100 years. The coffins were discovered in three separate burial shafts, each containing a number of sarcophagi. Archaeologists believe that the coffins were intended for priests, officials, and wealthy individuals who held high positions in ancient Egyptian society. The coffins were placed in the shafts in a carefully arranged pattern, with the larger coffins at the bottom and the smaller ones at the top. Khalid El Alni, the person in charge of the ancient artifacts in Egypt, described the coffins found in Al Asaf Cemetery as being in excellent condition. He said they were very colorful and have been preserved exceptionally well, considering that they are 300 years old. The writing on the coffins is extraordinary because the colors are still bright and have not faded, even though they have been buried for thousands of years. This is because ancient Egyptians used natural colors from stones like limestone, red oak, and turquoise mixed with egg whites, as explained by Wazari. He said that to maintain the natural shine of the colors, the ancient Egyptians mixed egg yolk with candle wax after painting and then spread it over the coffin. 
This technique has helped to preserve the vividness of the colors on the coffins, even after thousands of years. The coffins were decorated with vividly colored hieroglyphics and scenes from ancient Egyptian mythology. Some depict the god Anubis, who is the god of the afterlife and mummification. Others show scenes of the deceased being escorted by the god Osiris to the afterlife. The coffins also feature intricate carvings of falcons, snakes, and other animals, which were believed to have protective powers. Following this discovery, scientists employed radar and sound for additional testing. They then utilized a minuscule 6mm wide endoscope to peer inside the pyramid. The endoscope was inserted through a smaller gap between the stones, forming the chevron structure. During a press conference held near the pyramid, officials presented footage captured by the camera. The video revealed an empty passageway featuring walls made of roughly hewn stones and a carved stone ceiling. Further scanning will be conducted to determine what may lie hidden beneath. The findings were shared in a science journal named Nature. This is definitely the discovery of the century, says archaeologist and Egyptologist Yakunori Ko, a National Geographic emerging explorer. Many theories about the pyramid have been suggested, but nobody expected what they found. These discoveries are part of a long journey, going back thousands of years, to understand the mysterious and fascinating Great Pyramid of Giza, built around 4,500 years ago. Experts have stated that the coffins were decorated with scenes from the Book of the Dead, which is a group of spells that help the soul move through the afterlife. Some of the coffins also had names of the dead carved onto them, according to Hawass, who is an expert on ancient Egypt. The coffins that were discovered contained the remains of men, women, and two kids, and archaeologist Waziri believes that they were middle-class people. Even though they were wrapped entirely in cloth, their gender was identifiable by the way their hands were placed on the coffin. If the hands on the coffin were open, it meant that the person was a female, but if they were clenched into fists, then it indicated that the person was a male. Archaeologist Zaha Hawa stated that it is not common to find coffins that belong to children, so the discovery of two coffins has generated significant interest all over the world. The coffins were closed and placed on top of each other in two rows that were buried about three feet below the sand. The first coffin was found because its head was sticking out of the ground, and then 17 more were discovered when they kept digging. After those were excavated, another 12 were found. Waziri believes that the coffins were most likely hidden to protect them from tomb raiders. The discovery of these coffins is a significant achievement for archaeologists and historians. It offers a unique insight into the religious and cultural practices of ancient Egypt and sheds light on the burial customs of the time. The coffins also provide evidence of the high level of craftsmanship and artistry that existed in ancient Egypt. The intricate carvings and hieroglyphics are a testament to the skill and the artisans who created them. At a press event, Hawass explained that the discovery provides significant insight into the burial practices of ancient Egyptians. It shows that they respected the dead, no matter their gender or age. This will enrich our knowledge as Egyptologists about the belief of the afterlife, Hawass said. In addition, another big discovery was made by scientists in Egypt. The method used to examine cathedral walls, pyramids, and even volcanoes is based on the natural presence of tiny subatomic particles called muons. These particles constantly shower the Earth when cosmic rays collide with our planet's upper atmosphere. While we can't see muons with the naked eye, scientists can detect them using special films and detectors that trace their 3D paths. Muons can pass more easily through empty spaces than solid materials, so arranging multiple muon detectors around a structure can help scientists create a map of the structure's solid and empty areas. Experts aren't entirely sure about the purpose of the mysterious empty space, which appears to stretch at least 100 feet. They're cautious about calling it a chamber for now. Study co-author Mehdi Tabi, president and co-founder of the Heritage Innovation Preservation HIP Institute, said in a press briefing that they know the empty space exists. It's impressive, and it wasn't predicted by any theories. Tabi and his colleagues admit that they're unsure about the purpose of the empty space, but some Egyptologists have proposed possible explanations. One archaeologist from Cambridge, Spence, believes the space may have been created during the construction of the Great Pyramid. She points out that very large blocks weighing many tons form the ceiling of the chambers above the king's chamber, where Khufu was buried. Since the empty space lines up with the upper chambers of the Great Pyramid, which were designed to relieve pressure on the king's chamber below, Spence suggests the empty space could have served as an internal ramp for moving massive roof blocks into place. She thinks that as construction progressed, the ramp could have been left empty or filled loosely with materials. Furthermore, prior to this discovery, experts had identified one of the most important discoveries in Egypt's history. The discovery of the tomb of Emenhotep III is a fascinating story. 
At that time, archaeologists and explorers were beginning to uncover the secrets of the ancient Egyptian civilization, and the Valley of the Kings was a particularly rich area for exploration. The process of discovering the tomb of Amenhotep III involved a combination of luck, perseverance, and careful excavation techniques. The first step in the discovery of the tomb of Amenhotep III was the identification of the site. The Valley of the Kings was known to be a burial ground for many of the pharaohs of the New Kingdom period, but the exact location of Amenhotep III's tomb was not known. It was only through a combination of historical records, ancient inscriptions, and exploration that archaeologists were able to identify the site. Once the site was identified, the next step was to begin the process of excavation. This was a slow and meticulous process, as the archaeologists had to be careful not to damage any of the delicate structures or artifacts that they might encounter. The excavation team used a variety of tools and techniques, including brushes, picks, and shovels, to carefully remove the dirt and debris from the site. As the excavation progressed, the researchers began to uncover evidence of the tomb's existence. They found fragments of pottery, statues, and other artifacts that indicated the site was once a burial ground. This evidence led the team to believe they were getting closer to the tomb itself. After years of painstaking work, the team made their most important discovery yet. They found an entrance to the tomb of Amenhotep III, hidden behind a pile of debris and rubble. The entrance was sealed with a large stone block, which the team carefully removed to gain access to the tomb. The discovery of the tomb of Amenhotep III is a testament to the perseverance and dedication to the archaeologists and explorers who worked tirelessly to uncover the secrets of ancient Egypt. It is a remarkable achievement that continues to capture the imagination of people around the world," said Dr. Kent Weeks, American archaeologist and Egyptologist. The tomb of Amenhotep III was different from the tombs of the pharaohs who came before him. Although the general design was similar, there were several unique features. The location of the tomb was different, as it was situated on a slope away from the cliff face, unlike the previous royal tombs. Internally, some elements were modified, with changes mainly in their location. One of the most significant differences was a room cut at the base of the well shaft, which connected the anteroom to the burial chamber. Additionally, the burial chamber was orientated differently, and two large rooms were added to the crypt. Each of these rooms had a pillar and storage annexes. New elements were discovered in the decorations of Amenhotep III's tomb. Prior to the well shaft, there were only a few decorations. However, for the first time, the king was depicted with the royal car in the presence of the goddess Hathor Anut. Hardly anything was found intact in this tomb. Most of the wooden objects had been broken into small pieces by thieves in antiquity who wanted to conceal their actions. All the valuable metal coverings, as well as the metal fittings and the inlays made of glass or semi-precious stones, had been removed and taken away. Amenhotep III made a mistake by building his mortuary temple too close to the Nile River. Over time, the temple was flooded multiple times, which caused damage to its buildings and statues. The temple was also affected by an earthquake in 27 BCE, which caused additional damage. Moreover, stone and statues were taken from the temple to be used in other structures, which further damaged the integrity of the temple. This was not an uncommon practice in ancient Egypt. When the World Monuments Fund WMF, added the mortuary temple to the World Monuments Watch, only the Colossi of Menmon remained from the pharaoh's funerary temple. The Colossi of Menmon are two enormous statues seated on thrones each as tall as a six-story building and weighing an estimated 720 tons. They were originally placed at the temple's main gate as guardians. The ancient Greeks mistakenly called them Menon, a mythological Egyptian king, but they actually depict Amenhotep III looking out over the Nile. Apart from the Colossi, the temple site was covered with thousands of pieces of columns and statues, rubble, and stones that were used in building the massive complex. Also, the tomb has beautiful wall paintings that are considered some of the finest examples of artwork from the 18th dynasty. Unfortunately, since the tomb was discovered, the walls and paintings have deteriorated, and the structure is at risk of collapsing. The national authorities and international scholars have emphasized the importance of restoring the tomb as soon as possible. Waseda University from Japan, in collaboration with UNESCO and the Egyptian Supreme Council of Antiquities, has started cleaning up the walls. Consolidating the plaster and pigment layers and training local conservators to help with the restoration. Further scientific analysis and research on the rock and environment are also planned, which will be monitored and conducted by UNESCO to adapt the conservation work to the climate. The restoration project is the result of a collaboration among a team of experts with different backgrounds and skills. After this fascinating discovery, experts revealed one more unique and valuable coffin ever discovered in Egypt. 
Howard Carter, an archaeologist from Britain, was about to stop looking for the ancient burial place of the young pharaoh from Egypt, Tutankhamun. However, it was only by luck that the tomb was eventually discovered. Carter spent six years digging through the desert sands in Egypt's Valley of the Kings, looking for the tomb of Tutankhamun, the famous young pharaoh, but he couldn't find it. The Earl of Carnarvon, who was funding the search, became tired of waiting, and Carter had only one more opportunity to locate the tomb. After that, a boy from the area named Hussein Abdul Russell was carrying water to the workers when he accidentally hit a stone step buried under the rubble. Carter later recounted the story that the boy was curious about the European archaeologists and had used a stick to poke around, and that's how he discovered the stone surface. Afterwards, the excavation team became very excited and didn't take a break. They uncovered a total of 16 steps and also found two seals with Tutankhamun's symbol of royalty. However, it wasn't until Lord Carnarvon arrived from England that the team made a significant breakthrough. Carter opened the tomb's antechamber, and that's when the real discovery took place. According to the story, while standing in the dark passage, the Earl asked, Can you see anything? And Carter replied, Yes, wonderful things. The men had discovered treasures that had been untouched for over 3,000 years, and these were incredibly valuable. Carter later recounted that his first impression was that they were looking into a room filled with items from an opera set of a civilization that no longer existed. As they explored the chamber, they began to see details slowly emerging from the mists, such as unusual animals, statues, and gold. The whole chamber seemed to glimmer with gold. The news of the remarkable discovery spread rapidly, causing a global frenzy known as Egyptomania. Harry Victor Frederick Winstone, the author of Howard Carter and the Discovery of the Tomb of Tutankhamun, explains that the discovery influenced architects to design buildings with Egyptian-style facades. According to Winston, the famous mask of the Gilded King appeared on handbags, cookie jars, juice bottles, and even blouses that were being sold. Additionally, General Motors even promoted a car that was shaped like a pharaoh. In the Valley of the Kings, many people gathered at the excavation site to catch a glimpse of the treasures. The crowd included both locals and tourists from different parts of the world who were keen on getting a souvenir. However, Carter and his team found it challenging to keep the people away from the site. For a decade, the British archaeologist and his team worked diligently to document every artifact found in the tomb. They photographed and packed each item, and for the larger items, a small light railroad was used to transport them to the Nile and then loaded onto ships. Today, the most important discoveries are on display in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo and Luxor. One of the most famous items among the approximately 5,400 objects found is the 11-kilogram blue-gold death mask of Tutankhamun. It was found by Carter in the coffin chamber. The pharaoh's body was embalmed and placed in a 225-kilogram coffin made entirely of gold. The coffin was enclosed by four shrines of gilded wood, a stone sarcophagus, and three mummy-shaped coffins, which were placed inside each other. The death mask was placed over the face of the pharaoh. Among the other treasures found, there was a statue of Anubis, the Egyptian god of the dead. The statue was guarding a shrine that contained Tutankhamun's entrails. Anubis was a god in ancient Egyptian mythology who helped and safeguarded the spirits of the deceased. He was also known for his role in mummification, funerary rites, and the cemetery. Anubis was usually represented as a black dog or a man with a dog's head. Tutankhamun's father was Pharaoh Akhenaten, but his mother was not Nefertiti, as previously believed. Recent genetic testing conducted on discovered mummies suggests that Tutankhamun was born to a mistress, who was most likely his father's sister. This mistress was identified through DNA testing as an unknown mummy referred to as the Younger Lady. When he was only eight years old, the young pharaoh became the king. He was initially known as Tutankhaten, which means living image of Aten, because at the time of his birth, people worshipped the god Aten. Later on, when the priest began worshipping the god Amun, he changed his name to Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun, who was the child king of the New Kingdom of the 18th dynasty, died in 1323 BC when he was only 18 or 19 years old. According to examinations of his mummy, it seems that Tutankhamun died in an accident, although it is not entirely certain. It appears that the young pharaoh was not very strong during his lifetime. A group of researchers from Tubingen, Germany, Bolzano in northern Italy, and Cairo discovered years ago that he had a serious bone illness malaria, and genetic abnormalities, such as a cleft palate and a club foot. Tutankhamun was not a mighty pharaoh during his lifetime, but now the whole world is familiar with his name. His tomb, which is named KV-62, where KV represents King's Valley, still attracts many tourists today. Although the treasures found inside the tomb were taken out, the sarcophagus containing the mummified body of the pharaoh remains in the burial chamber. There are beautiful paintings on the walls of the chamber that illustrate the life and death of Tutankhamun. 
Even today, people are still intrigued by the legend of the Pharaoh's Curse, which Tutankhamun supposedly used to protect his tomb from intruders. Shortly after the chambers were opened, Lord Carnarvon, who financed the excavation, passed away, and other people in Carter's team died under mysterious circumstances. This led to further sensationalism in the media, even though Carter dismissed the idea of a curse as absolute nonsense. After lying hidden and untouched for over 3,000 years, Tutankhamun's tomb became affected by the tourist rush after its discovery. The accumulation of dust, changes in humidity, and visitors entering the small chamber over the years gradually caused damage to the tomb. Despite the sarcophagus being protected by a plexiglass cover to shield it from environmental factors and decay, there was a pressing need for action. Therefore, in 2009, a team of 25 restoration experts was deployed to repair the damages that had already been caused to the tomb and prevent future harm. The project was completed in 2021, and the ancient wall paintings looked vibrant and new. Additionally, new barriers, an advanced ventilation system, and a fresh visitor platform were installed. Hawass was the one who began the restoration initiative. He still believes that a number of visitors to the tomb should be significantly limited to preservers. He cautions that if mass tourism persists, the tomb will not last for another 500 years. Hawass proposes that an exact replica of the tomb be constructed close to the real one. We have to think about the future, Hawass said. Otherwise, at some point, there will be no more Valley of the Kings. So, the question is, how is this possible that these people, many centuries ago, had far more advanced technology than we have today? These pyramids were constructed using an impressive amount of stone, some of which were cut from quarries located hundreds of miles away. The immense size of these stones has fascinated people for centuries and has raised questions about how the ancient Egyptians were able to move them and place them so precisely. The largest of the pyramids, the Great Pyramid of Giza, is estimated to have consisted of over 2.3 million stone blocks, each weighing between 2 to 80 tons. The largest stone in the pyramid, the granite coffer in the king's chamber, weighs an astonishing 80 tons. Regardless of how they were moved, the sheer size and weight of these stones is a testament to the incredible engineering abilities of the ancient Egyptians. It is a feat that still leaves us in awe today, and one that continues to inspire architects and engineers around the world. The massive stones used to build the pyramids were not just impressive in terms of size, they were also remarkable in terms of the distance they traveled. Some of the stones used in the pyramids were cut from quarries located hundreds of miles away. For example, the granite used in the Great Pyramid of Giza was quarried in Aswan, which is located over 500 miles away from the construction site. The transportation of such massive stones over such long distances would have been an incredible logistical challenge. According to some scientists, the Egyptians used a combination of boats and sledges to transport the stones from the quarries to the construction site. These stones were cut from quarries located miles away from the construction site. The stones would have been loaded onto boats and transported down the Nile River to the nearest point to the construction site. From there, they would have been transferred onto sledges and pulled by workers to the construction site. This transportation of the massive stones was a remarkable feat of engineering. The stones used in the construction of the pyramids were some of the largest and heaviest ever moved by humans, and they were transported over long distances to reach the construction site. The logistics involved in moving these stones were complex and would have required extensive planning, organization, and manpower. In addition to the transportation of the stones, the placement of the stones was also a remarkable achievement. The stones were placed with such precision that even today, with modern technology, it would be challenging to replicate their construction. It is unclear how the workers were able to align the massive stones with such accuracy, but it is believed that they used a combination of mathematics, physics, and engineering to achieve this remarkable feat. Additionally, as scientists believe the ancient Egyptians may have used lost technology that has yet to be discovered. One of the groups of scientists suggests that the ancient Egyptians may have used a form of anti-gravity technology to lift the heavy blocks. So, the workers may have used a device that could create a specific frequency of sound waves that could lift the blocks off the ground. While this theory may seem far-fetched, there are a few pieces of evidence that support it. Firstly, there are depictions in ancient Egyptian art that suggest the use of levitation. For example, there are images of workers holding their arms out to lift objects, which may have been interpreted as a form of levitation. Secondly, there are ancient texts that describe the use of a substance called MFKZT, which was said to have anti-gravity properties. While the exact nature of MFKZT is unknown, some believe that it could have been a form of high-energy crystal that was used to lift heavy objects. Furthermore, Egyptologists have suggested that the ancient Egyptians used a technique called the wet sand method to move the heavy blocks. The wet sand method involves pouring water onto the sand, creating a slippery surface that allows heavy objects to be moved with less friction. 
The workers would have then placed the heavy block onto a sled, which was then pulled by workers or animals. The sled would have then been placed onto a track made of logs or other materials, allowing the workers to move the heavy block over long distances with minimal effort. The theory of the wet sand method is supported by several pieces of evidence. Firstly, there are depictions of sleds being used in ancient Egyptian art, such as wall paintings and relief carvings. Secondly, experiments have been conducted that demonstrate the effectiveness of the wet sand method. In these experiments, researchers have poured water onto sand and have successfully moved heavy objects with less friction. These experiments suggest that the wet sand method could have been an effective way for the ancient Egyptians to move heavy blocks. And it's interesting to point out that Elon Musk agrees with this theory. His tweet about the pyramids suggested that the ancient Egyptians may have used a technique known as wet sand casting to construct the pyramids. Wet sand casting is a process used in modern manufacturing that involves pouring molten metal into a mold made of wet sand. The sand cools the metal, allowing it to solidify and then take the shape of the mold. Musk's tweet suggested that the ancient Egyptians may have used a similar process to create the massive stone blocks that were used to construct the pyramids. The ancient Egyptians were very advanced in their engineering capabilities, and the construction of the pyramids is a testament to their ingenuity and skill. Elon Musk in a tweet, acknowledging the advanced technologies that the ancient Egyptians used to construct the pyramids. And according to scientists, these technologies have been lost because of rising sea levels that wiped out all the evidence that would explain how pyramids were built. Thousands of years ago, there was an apocalypse that erased much of the ancient technology from human memory, though some survivors remained. This event was accompanied by a significant rise in sea levels, which created a high energy zone that likely destroyed anything on the flooded coastlines. For many coastal communities, the threat of rising sea levels has far-reaching consequences, including the potential loss of valuable cultural and historical artifacts. Ancient artifacts on the flooded coastlines are always at risk of damage or destruction as sea levels rise, and this presents a significant challenge for archaeologists and historians who are working to preserve these valuable artifacts. Another impact of rising sea levels on ancient artifacts is the increased risk of damage due to storm surges and other extreme weather events. Storm surges can cause significant damage to archaeological sites and artifacts, leading to erosion, displacement, and loss. In addition, the sea level rise can also increase the salinity of coastal waters, which can accelerate the deterioration of organic materials such as wood and textiles. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.